Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the long-awaited, long-overdue AI getting started video. What does it mean to get started with AI? No, listen. This is actually a very simple video that I'm making here. And it's because trying to jump into the advanced stuff, especially before you understand the simple stuff and you've had your time to poke around in the editor, is a fool's errand. In fact, most of the people who would have benefited from this video already just got started and said, fuck it, I'm not waiting for Pronogo to make his stupid video. I'm just going to go find my way around. I'm going to go edit some AI that already exists, be it from Blizzard or some other modder, and I'm going to try my best to make some AI that makes sense in the confines of what I am trying to do. I'm going to use the resources that we have available to us in the form of some Google Drive links, and I'm going to do my damnedest to actually make some custom functioning AI, which is uh, better than Blizzard, of course. So... Since most people have already done that, um, this video might actually be just superfluous, but I figured if there's anybody else out there who wants to get started with AI and doesn't really know exactly what the hell they're doing, uh, feel free to make yourselves known in the comments section below, especially if you have a question at the end of all this lovely rant slash video, and you can uh, be enlightened. You, you too can write some AI. So what do you need? You need some tools. Tools for the job. So, first thing is first. We need the Python modding suite which we can grab from the first GitHub link here. There's also installation instructions somewhere down here. Um, yeah, if you just keep scrolling, it explains that you need uh, Python, uh, Pillow, which I, I use Python Imaging Library instead, which is also uh, right here. It says PIL will also work. Um, if you need some specific links, I actually have a more, like a, a more appropriate link here uh, where it basically has the... Uh, prerequisites already linked uh, on Mega, but they may be outdated now, so maybe you just want to go grab them yourself. Uh, either way, uh, th this is the most complicated bit of the whole installation process of any tool, so if you don't already have this for whatever psychotic reason, then grab it and, um, yeah, feel free to reference both of the links. The first two links in the description will explain, you know, wh what exactly the, uh, you know, how exactly you would go about doing that. Now, if you plan on making some more complicated AI scripts that use some of the new technology that we have, then you are going to need the uh, custom build of the Python modding suite from Nave uh, that has the improved, more complicated Py AI files. So I would go ahead and grab that from the uh, other GitHub link in the description. At this point, I think we're three links in. So go ahead and just click clone or download and hit download zip uh, if you are grabbing that, which is the same thing, of course, that you do with the other uh, Python modding suite, you just need to install the prerequisites for both of them to run. So once you've done that, you can, um, I think that's really everything that you would need to download per se. Uh, oh, you're also going to need the AI script extender plugin itself. It actually just received an update. So when you go to this watch page for the updates, this releases page rather, you can just go ahead and grab as.dll and it will download. Very useful. Now, once you uh, have all of those things, again, the AI script extender plugin, it's useful for any purpose, really, and I would recommend using it no matter what, but you only need the custom Python modding suite build for Py, the, the new Py AI, the updated Py AI, if you plan on actually using some of these new commands. There are some un engine functionalities that have been updated, uh, which I go over in the extended AI command guide, which is the first Google Doc link in the description. Um, and that goes over, you know, stuff like, oh, yeah, this changes the request log. And, oh, yeah, these changes are to the limits or whatever. So if you ever need to uh, brush up on what this actually changes and uh, how important that is, you can go ahead and open that up. The other Google Doc link is Necron's list. This is Necron in text form, ladies and gentlemen. You can just pop in and, yeah, here we are. What's up? How you doing, dude? So once you ever, you know, open up the AI scripts themselves. You basically use this as a reference sheet if you run into a command you're not familiar with. I would not recommend reading through this encyclopedia and trying to just recite them all back afterwards. This isn't a college test. This isn't rote memorization. I just want you to have this bookmarked so that if you ever have some questions about a command, you can pop in here, and if your question still isn't answered by the time you finish sort of looking through this, uh, you, that's when you would say, okay, now I need to ask somebody for help. I need to ask Necron. I need to ask Pronogo. I need to ask somebody in his new board section of his Discord server. Whatever. You know, you, you can at least exhaust this help yourself tool to, uh, to see if you can solve the problem yourself before uh, needing to rely on somebody else to be online when you need them to be. 
So hopefully that helps you with that. So these two, these can be read at your own discretion, like I said. Now, once you have the Python modding suites um, installed, I'm going to be using the ACE version, but the same tools or the same initial setup stuff uh, applies for everything else. There's a text file linked in the description as well called unitdef.txt. You want to replace whatever is in here by default with that file. And basically what this file does is if we go ahead and open it in Notepad++, which you will also need to grab, or you can grab Sublime 3 or some other advanced text editor. Um, this, it, you'll know that it's the updated one because it says this file's been modified by Pronogo and now includes all unit upgrade and tech entries. This basically just lets you use these shorthands for certain units, like Marine instead of writing Terran Marine, or uh, Zergling instead of writing Zerg Zergling. Or whatever. I don't even remember what you would write before. I, it's been so long since I've bothered to even look at that uh, because this is just way faster, just writing Zergling, Zealot, whatever. Uh, so if you haven't already updated this in your unit def thing, I would definitely recommend doing that because it's, again, way faster. And if you ever need to change something, for example, you're making a mod where uh, the siege mode turret, which is here somewhere. Um, oh, maybe it's not here. I thought it was. Either way, you are making stuff, like say this medic isn't a spellcaster anymore, or say the, you know, again, the siege mode turret, which is in probably like Zerg missile, or Terran miscellaneous. Um, or, or the Uraj crystal, for example, might be a worker. Uh, in that case, you would have to set it to building instead of military. So like that, there's an example of how you would do that. And so, oh, you know, it's just a useful utility. You change it back when you're not working on that particular project and you change it to something different if it requires you to do that. Again, maybe your marine is actually a worker as well, and so you would change worker marine, or building marine, rather, instead of military marine. So there's another example of how you would do it that didn't require me to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list. So uh, the reason why you need Notepad++ is actually because you're going to be writing your AI in this. If you don't, you are a bit of a loon. Uh, so it's actually faster to write your AI scripts in uh, what we call ASC3, which is... Um, there's like a there was an old AI program that I think had the same anagram or acronym, and basically it's it's much faster to do something like this uh, script name Terran three, Zerg town script D Terran three, and then you know wait one start town wait one and then you know you fill it in the blanks. If any, if anybody here has watched my um, modding streams at any point, you've probably seen this particular beginning of a, of an AI script thousands of times. Because this is what it looks like in Python. Uh, again, if you open up PyAI and you pop into Terran 3 Zerg Town, you know you see start campaign. We we don't we now know that we don't need to call that because it's the the class of the script is set to campaign. No matter what, if it's in use map settings, so it's really not necessary to put that there. But you still want the wait one, then the start town, and then this stuff, and then you know whatever else you have after that for you know your various commands. And so again, um, this is where I was getting tripped up when writing the script for this video in the past. Obviously, we're off script now. Uh, I kept trying to understand, like, okay, how do I crystallize this information so that anybody can get it? How do I basically condense an explanation as to what all of these commands do, you know, into such a fashion that anybody can use it? But the, the problem is, unlike some of the other elements of the modding tutorials I have produced in the past, AI scripts are not something that you can watch one video on or a series of videos on and then know everything there is to know about, okay, now I know, uh, all right, cool. You need experience writing them. You need to understand what's wrong with the original ones. You need to have reference sheets available like the ones that I described earlier. You need to just to have experience messing around with the tools and understanding their shortcomings and understanding how to use those tools. So. It's a little bit more complicated than just understanding how to tick a box in units.dat. You know, AI really is like the bulk of what makes a game interactive in the first place. And so this is what drives your engagement when you're making a campaign or a, a single level or whatever. You definitely want your AI to be on par with, you know, or at least on par with Blizzard, if not better. And so I would recommend using Blizzard scripts almost like you would use a Blizzard map to understand like, okay, this is what Blizzard did right. This is what Blizzard did wrong. Here's what I can improve when I'm making my own maps. Maybe I'll edit some of Blizzard maps, like Blizzard melee maps or Blizzard's, um, uh, what would you say, like the campaign maps, I guess, as well. Sure, maybe I'll edit these while I'm learning how to make my maps. 
and then I'll just make my maps from scratch, and that's how we'll handle that. Sure, that like that's an option, right? And so you can do the same thing with your AI scripts. You can edit Blizzard's AI scripts to better suit your particular missions, or you can just write your new ones. It entirely depends on what you feel like doing at the beginning when you're still learning. And so that's one of the things that I was running uh, into issues with is, I mean, ultimately we have an explanation for all of these commands. We have that reference sheet that I talked about. We don't need a video going over every single command and telling you how to use it or telling you all of the different use cases. There are certain things that you could learn that are like, you know, little tweaks or little elements of how you would, um, you know, incorporate a certain command into your repertoire. Uh, maybe some weird niche uses of a certain command to do something that doesn't uh, seem immediately obvious in terms of how it functions. Uh, so basically these like random tips that you could get. Yes, I will admit that there are a fair number of those actually, uh, but ultimately you can learn those just by doing it yourself or by watching my mod streams or whatever else. And of course, if you have any questions in that vein, um, then I would recommend uh, asking me or somebody else. So the last thing that I'll go over really quickly is actually how, what would it look like if you were writing this? Uh, well, like I was demonstrating earlier, it's way quicker to write in ASC3 than it is to write in PyAI, right? So if we look at, um, you know, we go back over to here, it, th this requires you to write like parentheses at the end to put the weight values in parentheses instead of just putting in, you know, uh, weight one. And it requires you to just basically spend a lot of extra time, a lot of extra keystrokes, adding in the parentheses and the commas and everything else that you need. Uh, so in an instance like that, I would strongly recommend you just start learning how to write it in ASC3 so you don't have to unlearn a bunch of behaviors that you would commit to memory if writing it basically using uh, the Python text editor here uh, that has been supplied by PQ, uh, the developer of the program. Uh, I wouldn't use this to actually write your scripts in the first place. So uh, that's what I started doing. And then I realized, oh, I should probably save these in text files in case they get corrupted or something anyways as a backup. And eventually I realized, wait, there's a button. Once I post, you know, these commands in, for example, I could just hit this and, the, you know, these this uh, the leftmost gear icon and it converts it into the Python script anyways. And so w what's the big deal? I could just do that. And so that's way faster. So you would write it in ASC3, you'd fill up the whole page, and then you would paste it into here. You'd... Uh, you know, compile ASC3 to PyAI, and then you'd see if there's any errors. And obviously there's no stop here, so of course it's going to yell at me. But then th that that's what you would do. So once you actually have a modified AI script bin file, you import it like any other file, like units.dat or anything like that, except the prefix is scripts backslash. So your AI script files should be saved as. Uh, so when you're doing that, you would do uh, save as AI scripts and bw scripts. So those are the file names, ai scripts.bin, bw script.bin, or ai script.bin, excuse me. I probably uh, actually misspelled it then. It's not script. See, I've been in the game for so long and I still made that basic error. So there you go, ai script.bin, bw script.bin. You save it as, you pay no attention to the fact that this doesn't update up top, it's just busted and it's, it's a very functional program. But uh, you know, aside from some, some issues there, it's, um, I think it's pretty solid. So then you would uh, open up the, um, again, the, I would use the master build for the MPQ and any anything that isn't Pi AI because that's bound to be more up to date. You'd make a new f MPQ. You'd add, again, prefixes script slash. And suddenly you have these files in there. And so when you make a f uh, FireGraph DXE or you, uh, if you're a remaster developer for some insane reason, then you can, of course, you don't even need an MPQ but uh, might be useful for your editor or whatever to have an MPQ on file, even though it doesn't, you don't need the AI script bins imported. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's really everything. You know, these files would be loaded when you eventually make a exe out of them. So that does it for the tutorial. That's how you use the tools. That's how you use the reference sheets. Again, uh, for example, if we pop this back open, we see kept expand. Hey, what's going on with kept expand? Why is that a command? What does that do? Let's pop up into the AI command list and scroll down it or control F. Cap, expand. And eventually we'll get there. It is, of course, the, uh, you know, furthest down or whatever. Um, so then there's a description of Cap to Expand as written by Necron. You can read that. And if you still don't understand what it does, then, you know, maybe you need to reference something else. State four regions. What are those? Let's scroll all the way down to regions. Eventually we'll find an explanation as to what regions are and what the states are.
There they are. Read in the states. Okay, cool. Now I'll read these and understand by what state four is. Hey, check this out. It even references all those other commands that are used. So, whatever. Um, that was a bit more of a rabbit hole than I was expecting, but there you have it, man. That's really all you need to know in order to jump in full, both feet and try your best to make sense of this psychotic experience that is uh, writing AI for Brood War. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was, uh, you know, you were able to understand what I was saying most of the time. And if you have any questions, you need anything clarified, you know where to ask me. The comment section of this video, my email, my Discord server, whatever. See you next time.